Hello there guys, what is going on Sun and Chelsea? Back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Saturday. This video is kind of going to be a, a transfer roundup um, because this is going to be the last Let's Talk Chelsea episode for about a week, probably over a week, um, because I am going on holiday, jetting off tomorrow uh, quite early. I'm not even able to stay up for the for the Chelsea game tonight. Um, so I wanted to make this video to just kind of give my thoughts on Kula Bali, the announcement, uh, Nathan Ake deal being off, uh, Jules Kunde, Armando Brozier, and just a reflection on the past couple of days, some of the news that I haven't really maybe put in my videos recently um, and also just to say thank you because I've started making regular videos again and thank you for the new subs who have who have come on board the likes the interactions not only with my videos but with my football London articles on Twitter as well really means well to me and trust me when I get back from my holiday even though I'm not going to be uploading that much over the next week we've got tactical videos some new series I want to try out on the channel probably more Q&A's collabs to do and of course the, the full return of uh, Chelsea in the Premier League so exciting stuff ahead uh, so I just want to say thank you and on the Substack thing because I've seen people subscribing to it thank you once again if, if you're watching this and you have subscribed if you haven't free to do so put your email in there link in the description box below for my Substack tomorrow there'll be another piece out uh, all about pre-season actually and does it really matter so I hope you enjoy that when, when you do read it if you do tomorrow but let's get into it uh, firstly with Koulibaly was announced I, I woke up this morning at around seven I thought Maybe like Sterling, we, we'll have to wait for the afternoon UK time to get the announcement. But no, Kula Bali was right there. Uh, pictures in front of uh, the massive fountain in, in uh, Las Vegas, all in, in the shirt. It was nice to see. It was a little bit strange. I looked at the time Chelsea had tweeted at 5.30 a.m., which is probably the earliest Chelsea have ever announced a signing. Um, even deadline day, I mean, for me, like 5.30 is, is kind of in that middle ground. I know some people can kind of argue deadline day. We've had signings maybe just past 12 or something announced, but this was really early. Um, but anyway, we had we had Koulibaly there uh, in the Chelsea shirts. Gave some nice quotes. I definitely suggest go and read them because uh, he references 2016 when Chelsea could have signed him. And it just kind of shows the how long this kind of saga has been going on with Koulibaly and listen it's an exciting signing it's another statement um, and I, I've written about this today for Football London you can go and read it now kind of it's all linked into sort of the sports director kind of role that Chelsea want to sign permanently hopefully post this transfer window and the fact that Chelsea needed to act and with Sterling and Koulibaly they are experienced well-known consistent players who over the past majority of the past decade have been two of their two of the most productive players um, in their position two of the best um, and maybe it's just that case of going for slightly more obvious names but ones that have, have shown they've got the leadership they've got the mentality um, and hopefully can impact things in, in a very in a very quick um, time because Tuchel needs that we need to, the squad to improve and I think Koulibaly the way we moved from say De Ligt to Koulibaly quite swiftly I think is really good business from top, um, from Todd Bowley to kind of show that now to, to go and, and make a deal happen particularly with Napoli I referenced this on a channel Napoli are not an easy club to do business with yes it's for a 31 year old yes it's for kind of a four to five year contract yes it's 34 million and it's kind of breaking new ground on that aspect but if Koulibaly can offer Chelsea the level of experience that mentality that he has in recent years and the quality defensively um, it could turn out to be a really valuable deal for Chelsea until we get that transfer structure in place. And, and we'll have to see for the rest of Chelsea's targets how this plays out because I, I do think the next couple of signings will probably be in sort of the younger bracket. Some of those players that you feel could go to another level that we're going to get into in today's show. Um, but Kula Bali, excited to see him play, excited to see obviously that connection to Edouard Mendy and Jorginho and, and how Chelsea's defence is going to line up because I just seeing Thiago and Kula Bali on the same team sheet I think is going to be really exciting along with the young defenders um, that will be in there as well and seeing how they learn off a player like Koulibaly along with Thiago Silva. So that's it. Koulibaly is a Chelsea player, second um, in LA. Just um, just another thing as well, we've seen the backdrop to Raheem Sterling was was in LA in Hollywood, the palm trees. Uh, to Koulibaly, we've kind of got the, the famous uh, Las Vegas background in the night with the fountain. Um, I'm curious to see in Charlotte, are we going to get someone in Ric Flair's sort of robe? Um, and in, uh, of course, in uh, Orlando, you're either doing it in front of the Universal sign or you're doing it in front of the Disney castle and maybe someone's going to be wearing a Mickey Mouse hat. We never know. We'll have to see in the coming week to see how uh, Chelsea's business picks up once again because it's, it's been very busy in recent days 
Let's speak about Nathan Ake. Uh, so Nathan Ake, the deal is basically off. We found this out uh, Friday morning. I think this is very positive news. Now, this does not mean that Chelsea... Well, it could mean that Chelsea are only signing two centre-backs this summer. I mean, that's what I prefer to happen. Um, as I spoke about in my last news video about Levi Colwell, I think that with, in the case of Ake, the deal financially just didn't make sense. And I just think what it, what it would have said about Chelsea going back in for a player who hasn't been a first choice option at his current club, hasn't played that many. I mean, 24, I think, league appearances over the past two seasons. Yes, I think some City fans like him for his versatility. I think like him for what he's offered when he's come in at times for Guardiola. But in terms of Chelsea, in terms of rebuilding, in terms of the future, I don't think it would have been the smartest move, particularly for the sort of money Man City were asking for. And I think there were better options for a similar price potentially on the market as well. Presnel Kembembe, I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea get him. But another name, as we've moved quickly on, Jules Kunde. I've mentioned his name recently as kind of one that I always felt <clears throat> in the background was going to be there for Chelsea. Chelsea have kind of done 50% of that deal in the sense of personal terms being agreed. The player wants to come to Chelsea. He has been waiting for Chelsea for a long time. I mean, maybe his cryptic tweet recently has kind of shown his annoyance at Chelsea for not moving for him. But a deal is there still to be done. And it doesn't surprise me, uh, Nazar Kinsella reporting this and others too, that Chelsea have gone back in for Jules Koundé. Um, I know people have their doubts about Jules Koundé and I completely understand it in terms of height, in terms of physicality, in terms of maybe some of the other options you could go for in the market and the price that Chelsea are getting. What I would say about Koundé, if, if you're concerned about height, is... And I know it's it's an easy one. It's an obvious Chelsea one to use. You know, Cesar Aspilicueta developed into a really, really good centre-back. He came in as a right-back. But, you know, think about the, the levels he has reached for Chelsea and the longevity. Yes, for a ridiculously low price given today's market. Um, but I think with Kunde, what I like about him is that versatility is the fact that you could see him play on the right of a back three, potentially in a back two, potentially as kind of a more conventional right back if Tuchel was to move to a back four and Reese is not available for some reason. So you've got that. I think the speed and agility in his game is really important, particularly in the sense of on that right side where you could have in a situation Sterling on the right, you could have... Uh, Reese as kind of a wing back or a full back. I think you need speed behind him. And I think that was a massive problem that Tuchel kept on running into in the remaining weeks of last season. Uh, whereas Bilaqueta was kind of at times being played as a wing back, Reese as a right centre back. And to me, my perception of it, maybe this is not the way Tuchel was approaching things, but my perception of it was that was to protect Aspilicueta rather than it being some tactic to get Reese more into good, into better sort of creative positions. Because I think logically, you have Reese and the wing back. You want him moving forward. You want him getting into those crossing positions and impacting things, getting inside the box. That's where he can be really dangerous. Um, so for me, I want to see Reese play as a wing back or a full back this season. And I felt that. At the back end, when a ball would go behind Reese, you saw Aspilicueta really start to struggle against those pacey attackers. So you need someone to, I think, counterbalance that. If Chelsea are going to start being proactive and start moving forward and taking more risks, I think it's why you look at Kimbembe as well, someone who can maybe cover uh, if Chelsea are going to look to move forward as well. So I think that Kunde has his flaws. I hope the mentality and the fact that he'd want to move to Chelsea are big factors here. And listen, he's always been in and around Chelsea in terms of the business that could be done this summer. So again, I would not be shocked if Chelsea move in here. Um, again, it's just that big question, isn't it, with Aspilicueta potentially moving on. Is it going to be uh, Kimpembe now and Jules Koundé or is it going to be one of the two? Let me know your, your thoughts because some people have brought this up in the case of Colwell still getting a chance. If Aspilicueta is moving, you're basically re replacing the three departing centre-backs with three other centre-backs. So it's like for like basically Aspilicueta, Christensen and Rudiger leave, Koulibaly, Kimpembe and Koundé come in. So really for a guy like Colwell, there's still that opportunity there. So that's another sort of side of the argument basically uh, that you could go into. Um, but, but that's it. I think that Koundé would... I'd be excited to see him come to Chelsea. I would. I think I wouldn't be so against the move compared to say Nathan Ake, which I just didn't think made made a lot of sense in my, in my opinion. Lastly, Amanda Broja. So West Ham uh, have made a bid for him. 
uh, around 24, 25 million, it, it feels like. Tuchel was very adamant he's our player. Of course, he, he went out to LA, is in Las Vegas now. He's He's been wearing a protective boot, which is a little bit concerning um, and may actually jeopardize a move. But it, it seems like it's a precaution at the moment, which is obviously good. Um, he probably won't play against Club America, which again is a shame. And it might be the same for Colwell as well, because both of those players, all of these youngsters, this is the time for them to really impress like Chalaba did. Chalaba was fit throughout last preseason. I think he played every game. He played a majority of minutes last preseason and that's what really got him in front of Tuchel and got him com- convinced that he could be a part of the first team. And missing any of these games, it, it may you may go, oh, well, it's only preseason, but it may be hurt, hurtful for these players because if, say, Havertz starts playing well, you, know, you, you need to take these opportunities and it's a bit of a shame. But in the case of Brozier, I think I said this the other day, if Chelsea aren't going to be signing another attacker, I'd like to see Brozier as a second choice striker because there's talk of Tuchel wanting a two-man sort of striker partnership at some point. The amount of games, five subs, I think that Brozier, we look at Chalaba and we're, uh, I'm guilty of it as well, we look at Chalaba and we're sort of referencing Colwell with him and sort of saying, look, a defender can come in and get minutes. You can make the same argument about players further up the pitch as well, that they could get about 20 appearances next season and really get some substantial minutes that shows them there is a path for them at Chelsea. And I think Broge is the same. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with injuries. We don't know what's going to happen with form. You know, I think this is a massive season for Kai Havertz. I think he really needs to take the mantle as number nine. I think he really does if he's going to start because there's no Lukaku now. The focus is going to be on him. Um, and I think there is going to be opportunity for Brozier to put pressure on Havertz to have that competitiveness and to really show, I think, Tuchel that he could be a decent option for Chelsea. He's still very raw as a player, Amanda Brozier, he really is. And maybe there are questions as kind of that focal point. Tuchel so far with kind of traditional number nine with an even younger player who hasn't really become refined or maybe that could be a good thing for Tuchel to kind of coach into him some of those things that Tuchel would want in this system. Interested to hear your thoughts with Brozier because I was kind of just resigned to the fact I thought this would be one of those young players Chelsea sell uh, for a variety of reasons, but that may not be the case now. And uh, I think that's what we're going to learn over the next week, basically. We've got the we've got the Club America game, we've got the Charlotte game, and we've got the Arsenal game. Hopefully, Brozier will be back fit for at least two of those games. And of course, the Udinese game when we come back from the US tour. Um, I, I'm really excited to see how he could impact things and maybe impress. So let me know your, your thoughts. And also, West Ham, I made a joke about this last night, uh, sort of turning in cheek. But I do believe it, you know, if, if they're going to be so adamant about their midfielder only being worth like 150 million, Chelsea should not be selling him for cheap basically um, and that does not mean I, I joked about 150 million for my man of Brozier obviously the situation between Brozier the level of Brozier and level of Rice obviously they're not you can't value both players at the same but it's just a case of if Ake is going 50 million if you know if West Ham are putting their their price on, on one of their key players at a ridiculous level for a central midfielder then why do Chelsea have to accept a low ball offer for Armando Brozier given his potential? I just I would personally be keeping Brozier until they come in with an offer to me 50, 40, 50 million. And it's it may sound ridiculous and it may sound unrealistic, but I just think it's the stance that Chelsea have got to have in this situation. And maybe there is some negotiating, maybe with Bowley, his idea of player trading, there's some deal to be had further down the line. I wouldn't be selling him for cheap right now because I just think he could offer Chelsea something and Chelsea could get something else um, in return, maybe, or just like a, a better fee for him um, at his current point. So let me know your thoughts on that situation in the comments below. But let's hope Chelsea play well. I, I'm excited to see. Obviously, it's the first preseason game. I think Club America have they're already sort of into their season. So fitness-wise, you do see it this time of the year. I think there's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of rotation. Um, I expect maybe you'll get a lot of players changing at half time. So those are my thoughts. Follow me on Twitter at Chelsea, and I'll see you again very soon. All the best.